ibigay niyo po sa amin. Kayo pong mangusap, turuan niyo po kami, punuin niyo ng karunungan ng aming isip at nawa ang karunungan itong magamit namin sa pagsunod sa iyong kalooban at sa matapak na pagsunod sa ginawa ng iyong anak na si Jesus na iligtas kami sa kasalanan at iligtas kami sa pag-uusig. Kayo pong maging tagapangaral, turuan niyo po kami, payapain niyo ang aming loob at nawa ang sandaling ito, maging kapakipakinabang sa aming lahat at maluwalhati rin namin kayo. Be our speaker, lead us unto greater knowledge of you and how to read your word. Father, we ask you, in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. Applying Biblical Teachings Today. Yan po ang pamagat ng ating pag-aaral. Napakahalaga na unawain. Unang-una, dapat po nating uh, ma-appreciate, maunawa kung bakit, that there are many verses that are ignored or unheeded today. Hindi lahat ng nakasulat sa Biblia ay sinunod sa lahat ng panahon ng lahat ng mga nananalig sa Diyos. Marami mga katuroan, lalong-lalo na noong Old Testament, ang lunmang panahon ni Jesus ay hindi na sinusunod yung iba o hindi lubos na sinusunod. At may dahilan, may konteksto. Tulad halimbawa ng ilang mga example sa ito na ating titingnan na noong araw, noong Old Testament ay sobrang higpit na sinunod, pero hindi na rin ngayon, lalong-lalo na sa mga Christian churches. Leviticus 20 verse 9, If you curse your father or mother, you will be put to death. Wala na tayong nababalitaan ngayon ng mga suwail na anak na pinapatay dahil suwail sila, pero noong araw ginagawa nila yon. Leviticus 20 verse 10, If a man commits adultery and with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. Once more, hindi na rin yan buong-buong implement At nung panahon ng Panginoon, alam natin na mayroong babae who was caught in adultery, ang papatayin na lang nila yung babae, hindi na yung lalaki. So at the time of the Lord's ministry on earth, this commandment was still being partially obeyed but only kalahati. Yung babae na lang ang binabato hanggang mamatay, pwede yung lalaki. Whatever happened, sa naging mga interpretation nila, yun ang kinahinat na ng application. Leviticus 20.14 It isn't natural for a man to marry both a mother and her daughter. And so all three of them will be burned to death. Puro death sentences to. And the church does not implement this anymore. Na yung merong isang lalaking nagkaroon ng relasyon sa mag-ina, silang tatlo ay susunugin. Leviticus 20, verses 15 to 16. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he shall be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and has sexual relations with her, you shall kill the woman and the animal. Sometimes it's very embarrassing to teach these lessons that was a Sunday school for children. But these are parts of scripture. Nung po unang panahon, dapat nating uh, unawain na sobra ang mga sexual uh, um, rules. Dahil ang number one concern ng mga Israelites noon was genetic and racial purity. Na hindi na naging concern nila later on, hindi na masyado. Pero nung araw, napakarami nila mga batas na may kinalaman sa sexual activity, sexual relationship, the sexual body parts of a human being. Kasi yun ang concern nila noon na hindi naman laging naging ganoon. Leviticus 20, 18, If you have sex with a woman during her monthly period, both you and the woman will be cut off from the people of Israel. Can you imagine this? Having uh, sexual relations with a woman who is menstruating means banishment. Matatagal lang ka ng citizenship, ititiwalag ka ng buong bayan, ano mangyayari sa'yo? You will be countryless. Leviticus 20, 27, a man or a woman who is a medium or a wizard will be put to death. They shall be stoned to death. Pag ikaw ay manguhula, pagka ikaw ay espiritista, ay babatuhin ka hanggang mamatay. Nung araw, one thing that is also not done anymore. Leviticus 21.9 If any of you priests has a daughter who disgraces you by serving as a temple prostitute, she must be burned to death. So the daughter of a priest and the equivalent now is a pastor, so a pastor's daughter who commits adulterous activities will, will be burned to death. What church will do that now? Genesis 17, 12 to 14. 
Throughout your generations, every male among you shall be circumcised when he is eight days old. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. So required din ang bawat batang lalaki pag walong araw na pagkasilang ay kailangang i-circumcise. Even the most strict Bible-based evangelical churches now, especially in the West, do not implement this anymore. Kasi kung i-implement mo yan, maraming mga pastors, maraming mga ministers, hindi pwede mag-minister kasi hindi sila circumcised. So pati yung mga very strict churches na lagi lang sabing biblical authority of scripture, hindi rin nila yan ini-implement. Kaya, bakit? Dapat gano'n natin unawain. Kasi kung sa pagdaan ng panahon, marami mga dating katuruan na hindi na ini-implement ng church mismo, ng Israelites mismo, nung panahon ni Jesus, dapat din natin malaman sa panahon natin ngayon, gano'n karami ang dapat talagang i-implement at gano'n karami yung dahil sa mga nagbabagong panahon ay nakakaroon na ng mga bagong application at basa. Because if you do not understand very well how to apply scripture, it could be oppressive. You could be bound by laws that were made 3,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago when the Israelites themselves began to change their attitude about some laws when their culture and the environment and the context changed. Leviticus 20.13, it is disgusting for men to have sex with another and those who do will be put to death just as they deserve. So who puts to death men who commit this kind of sexual acts? Even the strictest churches don't kill anything or anybody anymore because of these things. Leviticus 21, 17 to 19. No descendant of yours can ever serve as my priest if he is blind or lame, if his face is disfigured, if one leg is shorter than the other, if either a foot or a hand is crippled. So you see the repercussions of these verses if you will apply this today. Nobody who is handicapped Nobody whose physical body is less than perfect can serve as leader of the church or as even praise and worship leader. Kaya hindi rin yun ina-apply. Mali ba na hindi i-apply yun lahat? So acceptable ba as the church is practicing? Kasi kung minsan ang nakakalito lang mga kapatid, in some congregations and in some churches, may mga favorite sila na Old Testament laws na ini-implement. Magkamataya na i-implement nila, pero mayroon din namang hindi. At yun ang nakakalito. Sino ang namimili kung alin ang pwede at alin ang hindi? Kung malaki ang question mark sa ating isip, paano ngayon yan? Dami pa lang ganung laws. Covered pa pa tayo nun or not? We shall place everything under the authority and lordship of Jesus. And we shall go to that very soon. Meanwhile, Leviticus 24, 16, One who blasphemes the name of the Lord shall be put to death. The whole congregation shall stone the blasphemer. So pati yung mga magpa-blaspheme, sa karangalan ng pangalan ng Panginoon, binabato hanggang mamatay. Kaya yung mga Israelites noon, part of their worship activity, wala silang ginawa ko, di pumatay na pumatay na pumatay ng napakaraming tao. Can you imagine what happened to their personality? And what happens to people who are less than perfect? They are forced to hide. They are forced to go underground because they'll be killed. Leviticus 19, 19. Breed your livestock animals only with animals of the same kind. And don't plant two kinds of seed in the same field or wear clothes made of different kinds of material. Again, the priests of Israel were very concerned with purity. Purity of the genes, kaya pinagbabawal nila ang mga hayop na hindi pagkapalahi ay paglahiin, which is of course genetically impossible to do anyway. But in those days, they did not have a complete knowledge of genetic science, so pinagbabawal nila. Yung ginagawa ngayon sa Batangas at Cavite na may mga tanim na nyog, kopra, oh, na kinokopra nila, kape, tapos may papaya, at merong pinya sa ilalim, hindi pwede yon sa Old Testament laws. Kasi bawal magtanim na ng dalawang uri ng halaman sa isang bukid. Pero ngayon ginagawa na natin yon Intercropping, ang tinatawag, or mixed cropping. At bawal di magsuot ng damit na ang tela ay pinaghalong dalawang uri ng material. So kung merong kang cotton and wool sa yung tela, masama na yan sa Old Testament. Yung mga
mga terricotton, yung mga etc. etc. polyester, hindi yan pwedeng isuot noon, pero sinusuot na ngayon. Are you less holy? Because you are wearing it. Napakahalaga na unawain natin kung kailan pwedeng hindi nasundin ang aling verse. At tinuruan tayo ni Jesus kung papaano yung principle noon. We must understand that while the verses became part of the religious heritage of Israel, Israel had a unique and a very specific historical and cultural context. Lahat ng kanilang mga batas at mga kaugalian ay may kinalaman sa preservation of their race, preservation of their territory or real estate, or preservation of their racial purity. But when the Lord was born, many things had changed. For instance, ang daming hindi pinapakain sa mga Israelites, baka magka-peste-peste sila, magka-eltor-eltor, magka-sakit-sakit. But when the Lord was born, and the Lord had already, the promise that the Lord would be born had already been fulfilled, niluwagan yung mga dietary laws. Hindi kasi marapat na kung mo sinabi sa scripture ng unang panahon, i-apply mo ngayon, kahit na ang nagiging bunga ay pagdurusa, paghihirap, kalupitan, at kasamaan ng loob. So how do we apply verses today? What to apply and what not? Pag ba may anak kayo ngayon sa wail, sumagot-sagot sa inyo, babatuhin nyo hanggang mamatay? O gagamit kayo ng bagong technology, babarilin nyo? Pwede bang barilin o bato lang dapat? These are questions that are very practical. Pwede ba kayo umupo sa bus? O pwede ba kayo umupo sa mga silyang inuupan nyo ngayon? Kasi meron ding teaching sa Leviticus, hindi ka pwedeng umupo sa naupuan na ng babaeng nagme-menstruate. If a woman who is having her monthly period sits on a chair or any place, if you sat on it after she leaves that spot, you'd be unclean. So sino ngayon na mauupo sa mga reception areas, sa airplane, paano maalaman mo na may umupo doon na babaeng panahon ng kanyang monthly period? So i-apply ba yun or not? Alin ang i-apply at alin ang hindi? How to read and apply the Bible? Unang-una, mga kapatid, observe. Know the context. Know the background. Halimbawa, may mga utos, kill all your neighbors, lalo sa Old Testament. Eh kasi naman, ang context, war. They are at war. Eh pero ngayon, naiinis ka sa kapitbahay mo, magkaharap ka ng verse, how to deal with them, tapos sa kalagay, kill your neighbors, papatay mo ngayon sila. Obviously, wrong application. Because the context that gave birth to the command or to the teaching does not exist in your context now. Yung mga katotohanan nila nun, hindi mo katotohanan ngayon. So know the legal setting. Halimbawa, bakit ang istri stricto ng Old Testament sa mga babae, lalo sa sexual activity? Bakit dapat sobra silang faithful sa husband and one husband? Pero bakit ang mga husbands, lalo yung patriarchs, maraming asawa? Pwede pang marami. You must never forget that one of the main interests of Israel during the early days of its nationhood was domination of her neighbors. So kailangan marami ang population nila, kailangan hindi maubusan ng tao yung army. Kaya ang dami yung utos, go and multiply, go and multiply, go and multiply, kasi ang konti nila. Baka sila matalo ng mga neighbor, mabura ang lahi nila. Pero ngayon na ang dami, 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 dami ng tao, wala ka nang maipakain. Kung tingnan mo yung Bible na nakalagay, go and multiply, i-apply mo ngayon, kabalik ka rin ang magiging bunga. Hindi victory, kundi defeat. Hindi prosperity, kundi poverty. Hindi happiness, kundi hunger. So hindi basta verse, i-apply mo. Titingnan mo, paano in-apply nung araw at bakit? At kung hindi yun totoo ngayon, yung kapaligiran na nangyayari noon sa'yo, ngayon ay hindi totoo nung araw, hindi ka obligadong i-apply yung verse. Ngayon yung mga babae, bakit sobrang higpit sa kanila ng Old Testament? Because it was a legal issue. It was not even a spiritual issue. It was not a moral issue. It was a legal issue. Because in the Old Testament times, women were not individuals. They were properties. They were treated as properties of men. Kaya the daughter is under the authority of the father. Properties yan ang tatay. Kaya kailangan may mga dowry-dowry. Pagkapapakasalan siya, ibibigay mo sa magulang. 
Ngayon, pag ikakasala siya, ililipat yung authority sa husband. Property naman siya ng husband niya. Tingnan ninyo ang 10th commandment sa Leviticus 20, eh, Exodus 20, 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Property, no? You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hindi ba kayo nagtataka kung bakit kabarkada ng wife ang donkey? Ang ox? Pati kudkura ng nyo? Palo-palo? Batya? Bahay? Lupa? Kabayo? Kasi lahat yon properties. Ano ngayon ang kasalanan ng isang lalaki pagka ang babaeng asawa ng ibang lalaki ay kanyang sinipingan? The issue was not even moral. The issue was property yan ng ibang lalaki, bakit mo ginagamit? Kaya ang history is taken sa babae nun, which thankfully the Lord released the women from nung panahon niya. Kaya kitang-kita niyo ang gawa ng Panginoon. Yung si Martha, nakaupo sa kanyang paanan kasama ng mga lalaki, nag-aaral. Tapos sabi nung kapatid na si Mary pala, yung kapatid niya si Martha, nasa kusina. At sabi kay Lord, Lord, sabihin mga sa babaeng niya na si Mary, sumama sa akin sa kusina where women like us belong. Bakit nandiyan siya kasama ng mga lalaki? Ano, magkatrain siya ng leadership, discipleship? Ba't siya nandiyan? Ano sabi ni Lord? Mary has chosen the better portion. It will not be taken away from her. The Lord freed women from bondage to the kitchen. It doesn't mean that you should not cook anymore or be responsible. Pero binigyan niya ng bagong kahulugan na pagiging tao ng isang babae. Kaya yung babaeng dinudugo, hinayaan niya humipo sa kanya. Bawal yun. Gumaling. Yung babaeng nagdala ng pabango, hinayaan niya ring siya ay ministeran. At napintasan siya ng maraming mga kalalakihan noon. At mula Galilee hanggang Jerusalem, ang kasakasama ng Panginoon, mga kababaihan, na yun ang mga babaeng niya ng matatapang at naiwan kasama niya hanggang siya ipako sa cross, hanggang nagtakbuhan yung mga lalaki at iniwan siya. Marami si Lord na pinalaya mula doon sa mga gapos ng Old Testament laws. At ang babae, pinalaya niya sa pagiging property. Ginawa niya isang tao, isang individual. So, titingnan natin. Cultural setting. Bakit ganun yung mga batas at kautosan? What were the values that were prevalent at that time? Halimbawa, ang pagbubuhat ng banga, pagpapatong ng banga sa ulo o sa balikat at pagigib ng tubig ay trabaho ng mga babae. So, pag lalaki ka, nagbuhat ka ng banga, out of place ka, mabalilibak ka, pagtatawanan ka. Pag lalaki ka na nagbubuhat ng banga, kasi pang babae yun. Pero nakita nyo, nung no, magpe-prepare ng Lord's Supper, they were preparing for the Passover meal. Sabi ni Lord sa kanyang mga alagad na maghahanap ng lugar, pagpasok nyo sa bayan, sundan nyo ang isang lalaking may sunong-sunong na banga. At kung saan siya pumunta, doon kayo maghahanda ng lugar para sa ating uh, Passover meal. Here, a man who is not usually allowed to do this kind of thing, to carry a pot on his head or on his shoulder, was the one chosen by Jesus himself to guide the disciples. That's a statement, a social statement. Ang mga bata na baliwala nung araw, hindi pinapahalagahan, kaya nung naglalapitan sa Panginoon ay pinagalitan ng mga disciple yung mga ina dahil yung mga bata lumalapit kay Lord. Anong sabi ni Lord? Let the children come to me. For the kingdom of heaven belong to such as this. So yung mga batang baliwala, binigyan niya ng halaga. Yung mga may sakit, binigyan niya ng halaga, hinihipo niya. Pati patay na bawal hibuin, hinihipo niya. Tinawid ni Lord ang lahat ng bawal para magmahal sa tulad niyo at tulad ko. Para magpagaling, para magbigay ng halaga sa hindi pinapahalagahan ng lipunan. Yung mga religious leaders, ma-invite mo sa mga event ng mga makasalanan? No way! But Jesus was always there, present. That's why his religious critics called him a gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Tunisia nakikiumpok. 
Kung may dalawang mesa, isang mesa ng conservatives at isang mesa ng mga makasalanan, kung nandun si Lord ngayon sa palagay niyo, saan siya uupo? Kanino siya makikihalubilo? Kaya hindi siya naibigan ng mga religious leaders of his time. He democratized heaven. Inilapit niya ang Diyos sa tao kung kailan nung araw ay nasa gitna ng Diyos at tao ang mga religious leaders. Hindi ka pwedeng lumapit sa Diyos na hindi dadaan sa kanila. Binuwag ng Panginoon yung pader na yon, and He made heaven available for all. Kaya marami sa mga laws na yon, marapat suriin. What would Jesus do if He was in our midst? Mahalaga kasi yung context. Halimbawa, oil. Maraming teaching sa Bible, anoint with oil, you anoint my head with oil, etc. Ngayon, pag mayroong may sakit, may mga churches na ipagpe-pray yung may sakit, pupunasan ng konting lang isa noo, na parang akala mo yung isang magical formula or ritual. But the context of the oil was different. Oil was used as medicine, as disinfectant. In other words, may practical use yung oil, hindi magical. Kaya sabi sa James 5.14, Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. But the anointing of the oil is not just a ceremony. Kung may sugat, lilinisin nila, lalagyan nila ng oil. Kung may infection, itidisinfect. Kung mayroong discomfort, mamasahihin with oil because of the medical efficacy of oil that they believed in. Hindi siya magical. It was a medical procedure coupled with prayer. So ngayon, pag mayroong may sakit na lumigid yung elders, nilagyan nila ng oil, ina-expect gagaling na dahil pinag-pray, tapos nagtataka sila ba't wala nangyayari. Kasi ngayon, ang equivalent ng oil na yun, hindi eh, dalhin mo sa ospital, ipalinis mo yung sugat, ipo-open mo yung dapat openahan, tapos kambalan mo ng panalangin. Kasi yun na ngayon yung equivalent ng ministration of oil. Kaya mahirap kung basta kukuha ka ng verse nung araw, ika-apply mo sa ngayon. Dapat dadaan yan sa translation. And many things are lost in translation because of the distance of time and place and culture. 1 Corinthians 7.12 To the rest I say, I am not the Lord, that if any believer has a wife who is an unbeliever, and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. Now, ang point dito that I like to bring up is, Paul is speaking here, and he's careful to say, it is not a doctrine from God, this is just my personal opinion. So, I am not the Lord say this. In other words, yung mga teaching si Paul, na personal, stand lang niya, pero hindi kailangan gawing doktrina. Ang point lang, hindi naman lahat ng sinabi niya, nilagyan niya ng label, at hindi rin lahat ng sinabi ni Peter, nilagyan niya ng label. So, kailan... Opinion lang pala yun. Pag sinabi ni Paul na ang mga babae sa church dapat magbelo, yun ba ay para sa lahat ng babae sa lahat ng panahon, sa lahat ng lugar? O para lang sa mga babae sa Corinth na hindi nagbebelo? Dahil sa Corinth, pag hindi ka nagbebelo, prostitute ka. Sa ibang lugar na hindi ka nun ang kahulugan nun, obligado ka bang sundin yung verse? Katulad din sa 1 Timothy 5.23. Sabi ni Paul Gedimothy, no longer drink only water, but take a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. Madalas masira ang siya nitong si Timothy, so pinayuhan ni Paul, eh kasi puro to ibig lang iniinom mo, subukan mong uminom naman ng wine. Why again? Because the people in those days, and up to this point, totoo naman, that wine has medical efficacy. Nakaka-disinfect, nakakatulong sa digestion. So, yun ang payo niya. Paano ko ang nanay mo, masakit ang tiyan, cancer na pala, tapos naghanap ka sa mga Bible, first sa Bible, kung anong gagawin mo sa nanay mo, at nung binuksan mo yung pages, tumigil sa pages ito, nung ituro mong ganun, uy, 1 Timothy 5.23, nanay, uminom kayo ng wine. Yan ang sabi ng Word of God. So do you think matino yung application mo or not? That's what I mean. Context. Yun ba yung Context. You cannot and should not apply this verse to all cases of stomach sicknesses, as common sense will tell you.
But then again, sadly, common sense is a sense that's not really common. At ang pinakamasakit sa lahat, may nagtatampo sa Diyos, dahil may sinunod na verse, hindi pa siya umaman, hindi pa siya gumaling, hindi pa siya pumasa sa board, eh misapplied naman pala yung verse. Kaya nga, God is faithful to us, ang sukli natin doon, pag-aralan natin mabuti kung paano babasahin ang Biblia at paano i-apply na ang magiging ending, hindi lang technical obedience, kundi yung gusto ng kalooban ng Diyos na mangyari, na tayo mapabuti. Interpret through context. All that were said, done, and taught in the Jewish scriptures in their unique context. May background. May reasons. Merong mga desired effects. Outside of and without their original context, verses and teachings may not just be applied to all people at all times in all places. Kasi pag kumuha ka ng verse outside of its context and you forcefully apply it to your life today, the result could be catastrophic. The result could be painful. The result could be negative. So study your context before you blindly apply just any verse. Note what cannot and should not be imposed on you in your time and place. Halimbawa, may sumulat sa akin sa Facebook. Marami kasi nagtatanong kung sa mga problema nila. Pastor, pinatigil po nung aming uh, leader sa church yung pagmamano kasi daw po idolatry. Ha? Ah, kaya lang pa naman naging idolatry ang paggalang sa matanda. Sig siguro foreigner yung leader nyo. Opo, foreigner. Ayun pala, hindi nila kilala ang ating culture. So siguro sa culture nila, pagka nagumanon sila, idolatry na. Sa atin naman, hindi. So paggalang lang yun sa matanda, hindi naintindihan ng leader yung context ng kultura. So ngayon, nag i siya ng isang kautusan that is unfriendly to our traditions unfriendly to our cherished values. Foreigner kasi. Eh tayo. Foreigner din naman tayo to the culture of Israel. Foreigner tayo to the culture of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And without proper scholarship, you might commit the same mistakes that outsiders can commit. So examine soundness of reading, interpretation, and application. Tayo ay tumatanggap sa Panginoong Yesus. Tayo ay kumahanap ng church, ng fellowship, hindi para mabihag o makulong o matali, kundi para lumaya. Hindi para sumikip ang ating paghinga, kundi para lumuwag. Hindi para mapuwersa tayo magpanggap, kundi matanggap natin ang iba at matanggap din nila tayo. At sa walang patakarang pagtanggap sa isa't isa, ay tayo mapahinga, ma-relax, at ma-enjoy natin yung peace of Jesus. But wrong scholarship could turn teachers into monsters. Wrong scholarship could turn congregations and fellowships into prisons or into societies that do nothing but police each other, sakdalan, demandahan, sumbungan, magulo. Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Kahit naman nung panahon ng Panginoon eh, may mga mali-maling akala. John 21-23 So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple, meaning John, would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. Hindi naman sinabi ni Jesus, akala na ng mga disciples, huwag hindi daw mamamatay si John. It's a misreading of what Jesus said. Sila pa yun ha, magkakasama in the same time and place. Tayo pa kaya? hindi magkaroon ng possible misreading. Babasahin halimbawa yung Bible when God said, pero ang nagsabi naman nung word na yon si David. God ba si David? Ba, may pinasa kang psalm, sabi ni David, God, destroy all my enemies around me, destroy them like dust. Tapos yung nagsabi sabi, dust, we read from the holy words of God. Pero hindi naman God si David. Sabi mo, these are the words of David. These are the words of Solomon. These are the words of Moses. Iba naman yung quotation from God. Kaya hindi mo rin pwedeng sabihin, ang kumanasak Bible is the word of God. 
Kasi meron din yung words of Satan. Nung sabi nung ahas kay Eve, you will not die. So, tatawa, tatawakin mo ba yun, word of God? Obviously, it was the word of Satan. So pinipili mo sa Bible, sino ang may sabi? Uy, sabi ng verse na ito, kailangan daw, ganito ngayon mo, sino ang may sabi? Bakit sinabi? Sino ang kausap? Ikaw ba yung kausap? At kung hindi ikaw, yung bang konteksto mo ngayon, kamukha ng konteksto ng kausap para pwede mong i-apply sa'yo yung sabi sa kanya, dapat may ganong filters. 2 Peter 3.16 Sabi ni Pedro, Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. There are some things in them hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own dis- destruction as they do the other scriptures. Sabi ni Pedro, alam niyo maraming itinuro si Paul na mahirap maintindihan. At yung mga mangmang naman, ang ginawa nila doon sa mga hindi maintindihan, nagrunong-rurungan sila, pinilipit nila, binaluktot nila, itinuro pa rin nila, eh, ang tinuro na nila palubaluktot, pinipilipit. At sabi, hindi lang sa mga sinabi ni Paul, ha? Ganyan din ang ginagawa nila sa maraming ibang parts of Scripture. So there is a possibility of a very wrong reading that leads to a very wrong interpretation and a very wrong application which when applied to people's lives make their life harder instead of easier. That makes them more devilish than saintly. Kaya ang sabi ni Lord sa mga Pharisee sa kanyang panahon, you walk over land and sea, you travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when he has become one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. Kanya, sayang naman ang mga pagmimisyon nyo, sayang ang mga trabaho nyo, hirap na hirap kayo na mag-win ng convert, pero pag na-convert nyo na, mas masama pa sila sa inyo, mas malala pa, dahil ang inihahawan nyo sa kanila, wrong reading, wrong application, cruelty to others, self-righteousness, judgmentalism, but you make them twice as much a son of hell as you are. Harsh words, but true. So interpret through the lens and filter of Jesus, which is nothing but love. What do we mean, mga kapatid? Tanong siguro na iba. O so anong gagawin ko ngayon sa mga Old Testament teachings? Tulad nung una natin pinanggit lahat, ang dami-dami nun, hindi na pala ina-apply. Anong gagawin ko sa mga New Testament teachings na nasulat nung si Jesus ay bumalik na sa langit? Ang dami-dami din nun. Alin doon ang i-apply, alin ang hindi. Interpret through the lens and filter of Jesus, which is love. Kasi itinanong na sa kanya yung tanong na yan noon. Matthew 22, 36-39 Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Mahalagang tanong. Ang dami nga namang laws, so alin ang uunahin kung hindi mo magawa lahat? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In one single stroke, the Lord taught the people what to do with all the commandments of the Bible. To filter all of them through His commandment of love. So pag meron kang gustong sundin na verse, dahil nakasulat, sasalain mo muna sa ibinigay ni Lord na salaan, which is love. And ask yourself, is it not loving? Halimbawa, o batang suwail, sumagot-sagot sa magulang, sabi ng verse, matuhin to death. You ask yourself, kain ba naman ba to death? The answer is no. Kaya hindi na natin ginagawa ngayon. Kain ba na sunugin itong nagkasala ng adultery, kahit adultery pa nga, ang sagot pa rin ay hindi. Kain ba na patuhin ang babae caught in adultery, kahit caught in the act, ang sagot pa rin ay Jesus, hindi. Kaya hindi niya ipinabato. 
hindi niya kinukonsente ang kasalanan, pero ine-expose niya yung mas malaking kasalanan sa tingin niya. Yung judgmentalism, yung cruelty, yung unkindness. Dahil ang ginawa ni Jesus sa kasalanan, binayaran niya. Pinatawad niya. Tapos ang kapwa-tao, sisingilin ka sa kasalanan mo. Eh hindi naman ikaw ang Diyos sa pinagkasalaan. Hindi ikaw ang creator. Hindi ikaw ang writer and author of moral law. At hindi ikaw ang namatay sa krus para iligtas ang tao. Bakit ikaw ang naniningil? Parang wala ka sa lugar. Kaya merong kwento si Jesus na yung isang katulog na ang dami-dami ang utang pinatawad ng amo. At matawas mo matawad, sinasakal niya yung isang kapwa katulog na may maliit na utang sa kanya dahil tinisingil niya. Sabi niya, ikaw pinatawad lang kita, tapos siya ayaw mo patawarin. At ganun mga kapatid ang bumabato sa mga tao makasalanan. Pinatawad ka ng Diyos, hindi ka binato, tapos ikaw mong babato ng iba. Anong karapatan mo na gawin yun? Kaya yung filter ni Jesus, itatanong mo, is it not loving? And if it's not, huwag mo nalang implement. Makakabangga mo lang si Jesus kahit loyal ka doon sa verse. In other words, meron si Lord na inayos. May mga abuses siya na hindi na pinayagang ituloy pa. Meron siyang mga katuroan so that we could have a kinder, gentler church. Which was not the trait of the religious system of his day. Kaya sa 1 John 4, 7-8, Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. So dito, ipinakilala ko anong pinakamahalagang ginagawa ng mana ng balataya. Umibig sa kapwa. Paano makikilala ang tunay na mana ng balataya? Maibigin. Hindi sinabing kailangan baptize ka by immersion o by pouring, o by sprinkling. Hindi sinabing, hindi ka dapat kumakain ng ganito at ganon. Hindi sinabing, ganito dapat ang suot mo dahil babae ka. Hindi sinabing, ganito dapat ang Bible version na binabasa mo lamang para maging tunay ka anak ng Diyos. Ang sabi, dapat loving tayo. Kasi ang tunay na anak ng Diyos, loving. Ngayon, kung hindi ka loving, kahit sa ulo mo lahat ang verses ng Bible, kahit tama ang costume mo araw-araw, kahit may Bible version ka paborito na yun lang sa tingin mo ang tama, kung hindi ka loving, sabi ng 1 John 4, 7-8, you do not know God. Ganun pa simple. Ang tunay na dapat na bunga ng pagkakakilala sa Diyos at pagkakalipta sa atin ni Jesus ay tayo'y nagiging maibigin. Which follows that you will have to filter many teachings that are not kind when applied today to people who never share the same context as the original recipients. Si Paul, napakahusay na teacher, and up to a certain point, napaka-strict rin, sabi niya sa 1 Corinthians 13, 1-2, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong, or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Sabi ni Paul, kahit ano pang hinahangaan ninyo ng mga spiritual gifts ng leaders, kahit nasa aking lahat, tapos hindi ako maibigin, wala pa rin kwenta yun. Bali, wala pa rin. Bakit kailangan si Jesus? At yung sinabi niya ang masunod. Malinaw, sabi ng utos ni Moses, batuhin ang nangangalo niya. Pero hindi ipinabato ni Lord, sino dapat ang masunod? At kung masusunod si Jesus, bakit naman? Philippians 2, 9-11 Then God gave Christ the highest place and honored His name above all others. So at the name of Jesus, everyone will bow down, those in heaven, on earth and under the earth. And to the glory of God the Father, everyone will openly agree, Jesus Christ is Lord. Who is Jesus Christ? Lord. Who is Lord? Walang iba. Hindi tayo dapat malito. 
kung sinong dapat sundin. Kung ang loving teaching ni Jesus ay may conflict with unloving teachings, dapat alam nyo kung alin ang dapat masunod. Jesus is Lord over history. Jesus is Lord over dated and outdated traditions. So leave unloving traditions to history and the museum as Jesus very clearly and powerfully did. Maraming mga malulupit na mga kaugalian at kautusan inilagay na niya sa museum. Ang gusto niyang umiral, love. So unang tanong natin, is it not loving? At pwede mo rin naman itanong in the positive, is it loving? Meron kang gustong gawin sa kapwa mo mana ng palataya, is it loving? Nagkasala siya, pinagchichispisan niyo sa prayer meeting, is it loving? Gusto niyo siyang usik-usikin, is it loving? Would you want it for people you love? Would you want it for yourself? If not, then don't do it. Leviticus 19.18 Love your neighbor as yourself. Itatanong ng ilang observant, eh yan po, bakit Leviticus? Bakit pwede pa rin ngayon? Eh kasi loving. Papasa siya sa filter ni Jesus. Hindi mo naman ilalagay sa museum lahat eh. Yun lang hindi papasa sa loving test, sa loving screen ni Jesus. And if the verse teaches love, ask further, is it beneficial to all concerned? Huh? Is it liberating? Hirap na hirap na ang mga member ng church, pero economic problem. Doon ka pa ngayon, mag-iisip magawa ng kung ano mga expensive project, ha? hindi ka titigil lang kahihingi ng mga donation. Is it loving? Is it kind? May mga member ng church na medyo may kaya, medyo may pera. Hindi mo natitigilan ang kahihingi. Is it loving? Hirap na hirap siyang magnegosyo. Ang asawa niya malayo, OFW, marami siyang pera. Is it loving? Nahinga siya lang yun ng kung ano-ano, sapatos, bag, etc., etc. The people come to the church to be loved. Hindi para pitasan. Hindi para sila pagsamantalahan. Kaya dapat yung church loving. And you also ask, does it set free? Galatians 5.1 It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Sabi, para ka lumaya, kaya namatay si Jesus. Kaya manindigan ka. Huwag ka nang bumayag na maalipin muli. Akala ng iba, maalipin lang ng kasalanan ng context. No. Huwag ka nang bumayag na maalipin uli ng oppressive religion. Kasi laki ang context ito was the oppressive system that Jesus criticized and Jesus exposed. Nakakapagpalaya ba na i-declare mo sa Diyos ang buong-buong income mo? Tapos may naninita sa'yo pag kulang ngayon donasyon. Is it loving? You ask yourself these questions. Kasi si Jesus nagpapalaya, hindi nagtatali. John 8.32 Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So mula nung nakilala natin si Lord, tapos naging active tayo sa isang church, lumaya ka ba o lalo ka na kulong? Lumuwag ba ang dibdib mo o napahinga ka? Did you find relaxation or did you find stress? Kasi ang tunay na church where the Lord is Lord, restful. Restful from pretense, from pressure to be perfect because nobody is perfect. Makalaya ka sa sobrang criticism dahil lahat kayo naggagamutan sa isa't isa because the church is a hospital and everybody has some sickness. It is not a display window of perfect products. So you have to pretend to be perfect. Napakahirap kasi ko minsan. I have friends who are quite well known in many public circles. Tapos magiging Christian sila. Hindi naman sila makapahinga sa church. Kasi parang sila nasa shooting o nasa press conference. Pagsikat kasi yung tao, yung mga taga-church, wala nang ginawa na kipupugit, pagkaguluhan. Hindi na hayaang manahimik at manalangin. I have a very good friend na very 
well-known artista, naging Christian, maaga siyang pupunta sa church para manalangin bago magsimula ang service. Nakatuyuko na siya at mananalangin, may kakalupit pa, sister picture. Ba't hindi mo siya hayaang maging sister lang? Ba't hindi mo siya hayaang magpahinga? Kailangan bang para na namang nasa public siya? And this is the crime of the churches today. They do not let celebrities rest. Lalo't kung mayaman ka pa, naku, donation agad. Ang tingin sa'yo, ting, donation, ting. Parang cash register ang tingin sa mga may kaya. Nakakadala tuloy mag-church. Pag ganun. Mga kapatid, let's give each other rest. Okay? Kapahingahan mula sa mga pressures, kapahingahan sa pag pagiging always looking perfect. And yes, kapahingahan sa mga manghihingi. Kailangan relax ka. Sabi ni Lord sa Matthew 11:28 to 30, If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I'll give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders, and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. Kung gano'n natin gusto kagaan ang maramdaman natin, gano'n din ay panamdaman natin sa ating kapwa. So you ask yourself, is it easy and light? Meron akong gustong gawin sa aking kapatid sa pananampalataya, meron akong gustong sabihin, is it restful? If not, freeze. And if yes, apply the verses. Yes, apply. Go to the part where you apply. Jesus is the standard, the new covenant and agreement, the measure of all things. Don't be confused. Colossians 2.9, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Ang buong buong Diyos ay nabuhay kay Jesus. Kung meron kang dapat pakinggan, siya. Colossians 1.15, He, meaning Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Lahat ng gusto mong malaman, ang malaya. Pero may isa pa pagpapalaya si Jesus. Nag-park ka, pumunta agad yung pulis, sinuhuli ka. Pero nang tingnan nyo, wala naman palang signboard na no parking, inalis ni Jesus yung bawal. Hindi ka na ngayong kriminal. Because you overcame the law that condemns with the law of love. Ang nakalagay lang doon sa kanatula, love. Diba? Pagtingin ng pulis, huliin kita kasi nakalagay dyan. Pagtingin niya, love ya. O ano ngayon ang crime mo? Yun ang ginawa ni Jesus. Kaya sabi sa John 5.45, Don't think that I will be the one to accuse you to the Father. I won't do that. You have put your hope in Moses or the law, yet He is the one who will accuse you. Sabi niya, yung hilig niyo sa law, yung hilig niyo sa mga bawal, yan ang magkocondemn sa inyo. Pero ako, I don't condemn you. I set you free. I set you free not only from the power of the law and punishment of the law, but I also set you free from the guilt that enslaves you because you have broken the law. Ang sarap-sarap na kaibigan, tagapagligtas, at Panginoon si Jesus. Dapat gano'n din ang mga Kristiyano, ang sarap-sarap kasama. Hindi yung, dahil hindi mo patapos yung bisyo mong paninigrilyo, nahuli ka bigla ni Manang, niya, ganyan ba ang Kristiyan? Yung usig agad. Pag medyo nabigla ka at may nasabi kang word na hindi maganda, ganyan ba ang Kristiyan? Ganun yung maraming Christian eh, para kami kasamang manguusig. But remember, Satan is the accuser, not Jesus. Whoever accuses other people is doing the work of Satan, not of Jesus. Kasi sabi niya, I will not accuse you. I will never be the one to accuse you. Yang hilig niyo sa legalismo, yan ang mag-a-accuse sa inyo. And then very interestingly, and thankfully, Jesus gave a new command. Just one command. Love. Sabi niya sa John 30, 34, But I am giving you a new command. You must love each other just as I have loved you. So sa isang command na yan, parang tinakpan niya ang lahat ng command before him and after him, 
All the commands that are not loving. Pero yung loving, tuloy pa rin, ha? Yun lang, hindi loving ang napawalang visa. Kaya sabi ni John the Baptist, who understood it, John 3.30, He must become greater, I must become less. You know, John represents the Old Testament and he was the last prophet of the Old Testament. At sabi niya, Jesus must increase. I and the whole system I represent must decrease. Alam ba natin ang kahulugan nun? That it is Jesus who must increase. Not the Pharisees. Not even the prophets. Not Moses. Jesus must increase. Because Jesus is above Old Testament prophets and New Testament teachers. Like John who admitted it. And like everyone else. Pero sasabihin niyo, paano yung 2 Timothy 3.16? All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yes. But first, you must define what scripture means. Scripture means Old Testament. It does not refer to the New. Because when 2 Timothy was written as a letter, wala pang New Testament nun. So pag binabanggit ng scripture, ang tinutukoy, Old Testament. Ganon din si Jesus pag sinabi niyang, you know what the scripture say? He means the Old Testament. At alam na natin ang ginawa ni Lord sa Old Testament rules that are not loving, overridden na ng love niya. So yes, all scripture still important after passing the Jesus test, the Jesus standard, the Jesus filter, all scripture is profitable, to apply to one's life. So ngayon, mahalaga pa rin lahat, pero sasalain na, sasalain ni Jesus. You ask yourself, is it loving? Is it kind? Is it good? And when the answer is yes, then live by it. And if the answer is no, sabi ni Lord, ay, kasali yan ni Moses, who will condemn you. Better come to me, because I will not condemn you. Pagpasado sa test ni Jesus, make it a test.